We're ready for baseball. Cameron McKenzie delivers the first pitch, and it's a swing and a miss, or excuse me, tap foul. And already it looks like the catcher behind the plate, Hunter Wood, is a bit shaken up. May have got tapped with that foul ball. Hot day here in Utica, Michigan. Sun beaming down on the field this Memorial Day weekend. It's been really a great weekend of baseball. We've seen a catch that's made the top 10 plays on Sports Center. Game one had the Mammoths on top of the Beavers. Now game two quickly underway. And Cameron McKenzie, the ace of this Beavers pitching staff, has a job to do. The 0-1 is in there for a strike on the outer part of the plate. 0-2 quickly on Tommy Fiesel. Defense straight up on Tommy. And the 0-2 got him on strikes. Beautiful breaking ball that totally froze up Fiesel. And I'll tell you what, Cameron McKenzie, the man on the bump for the Birmingham Bloomfield Beavers, they're going to try and... Get a comeback from losing game one of this day double header. Cameron McKenzie on the season, 11 innings under his belt through two games. He does have an 0-0 record. He's allowed nine hits, four walks, but does have 14 strikeouts and a 3.27 ERA. It's actually the exact ERA and the same exact whip, 1.18. His numbers as far as ERA and whip are concerned, as he had all last season, as well, so kind of unique fact right there. Wow, the 1-0. Excuse me, the first pitch of this at-bat misses outside, making the count 1-0. McKenzie, a fast worker, likes to get ahead. That one misses upstairs. 2-0 the count on Drew Kitson, the man who made that spectacular play in center field. First inning of last night's ball game. That's something at this league we will We'll have that in mind for a, a long time to come. Yeah, year one we had Donnie Murray's no-hitter that will go down in history. Had so many different things we could talk about from last season and then this year with Kitson just in the third weekend here of this 2018 season already making the top ten plays, top five in fact, of the Sports Center's top ten plays last night. It was uh, very fun to watch and Great to see the USPBL get some national exposure as Kitson looks at called strike one there, three and one. And McKenzie has gotten behind Kitson to start off, but he did come back with that good fastball. Now he'll step off the mound for a moment, and it looks like he's ready to get back to work. McKenzie, the three one. High and deep. Right center field, but it will stay in the park. Run down out in center field. Nice play by Aaron Gothier. That'll bring up the first baseman, Brandon Cuddy. Cuddy did start in game one of this doubleheader. 0.77. Batting average coming into action today, so a fairly slow start for the first baseman. And he looks at a ball inside. McKenzie had that really amazing performance where he struck out eight of the first nine batters he faced. That was opening weekend, and that was something, another really cool moment that we've already seen only a handful of weeks into the season. That one line, center field, base hit. Cuddy is aboard with two away. And the first hit of the game for the Mammoths. Yeah, Cuddy in the previous game, over three, two strikeouts, a ground out unassisted to the first baseman, and then reached on a base on balls in the third inning last game, did come around to score one of those seven runs for the West Side Woolly Mammoths as they took care of these Beavers by a final of seven to four. But that man on the mound, Mr. Cameron McKenzie, is going to do everything in his power to get the Beavers the victory here in this 
later half of this Sunday matinee contest day before Memorial Day and we've talked about it all weekend long we have got perfect weather all the way from our Thursday game on Thursday night and it looks great up until the end of the game tomorrow so six games this weekend it's been a lot of fun a lot of work but you get those two together you get rewarded and I think we got a big reward in Mr. Drew Kitson last night that was definitely the highlight of the weekend so far but we're ready for more action as the 2-0 misses low and in 3-0 but yeah you couldn't have said it better we've really got lucky with this really the whole experience this weekend six games in one weekend you had that incredible play you've had the great weather as McKenzie gets ready for the 3-0 checked his swing did he go they're gonna say Pagano did go and Pagano will take a few hacks out of the box Pagano another one of those guys who's gotten off to a fairly slow start McKenzie delivers the 3-1 and it's ripped into left by Pagano Pagano had a nice little game in game one yeah in that first game Pagano did have a two-run homer in the third inning that drove in Cuddy, and he also had an RBI single and came in to score back in that first inning where the Mammoths had put up a three spot and kind of set the tone for the game one of this doubleheader. And we were expecting something different with Cameron McKenzie on the mound for the Beavers, but the Mammoths are continuing to swing the bats well in this Sunday contest as already back-to-back -back singles with two outs. It's all about that two-out hitting with your backs against the walls. Mammoth's doing a good job so far against the right-hander. McKenzie misses with the first offering of the at-bat to Ethan Whisker. Some traffic on the base paths as Cameron McKenzie, who hasn't really been accustomed to this much trouble as he looks at second base to make sure everyone is staying put. McKenzie out of the stretch. Whisker waits. Foul back to the screen. One and one the count. On Whisker out of Clio, Michigan. So another one of those local guys that we've seen a lot of in this league. Yeah, Whisker in game one. One for four, or excuse me, one for three with a double in RBI. In the first inning, was hit by a pitch in the third. Reached on an error in the fifth. By the shortstop, Skyler Mercado came in to score and then lined out to Daniel Oliveri when we saw that Maglio-esque catch. As the 1-1 one -one misses away. But yeah, you're talking about that Maglio catch. There was a Maglio collision in left field and a Maglio catch in left field. So that was, I mean, it was brought back some memories. But McKenzie ready for the 2-1. Foul back to the screen once more. Even the count up at two and two. Pagano's home run earlier in the day in game one, in my opinion, I think that'll get him going. He was off to a fairly slow start, 188, coming into today's action. Had that home run and a really sharp single here. So I, I think one of the, a big hit like that really does get a guy going. McKenzie ready for the 2-2. Two -two. Bounces in about five feet in front of home plate. Nice stop by Hunter Wood to keep the runners where they were. McKenzie adjusting the landing spot a little bit. Maybe wasn't pleased with how he landed on that last offering. Count is now three and two on Whisker. Mercado, couple steps into the grass. Fairly deep for what we've seen up to this point for a short stop. Kenzie the 3-2. Misses high, load the bases up. Whiskers aboard. And that'll bring up Jalen Lawson, who had a home run last night, and also a pretty solid double in the first game of this double header. So Lawson swinging a hot bat. Let's see if he can continue it here in a pretty big spot against the Beavers ace. Yeah, tough spot here for McKenzie to begin this ball game. He had a strikeout and then a flyout and then a single, a single, and a base on balls have the bases loaded. Much different start 
than what we saw last time out of McKenzie. Lawson, the Alabama native, getting ready for the first offering from McKenzie. Right down the middle, strike one. Base is full. Outfield, once again, pretty straight up. Not, no shifting to this point. Flag out in center. Not really a factor. Wind is uh, pretty still at this moment. Foul back down on the first base side to the screen. 0-2 quickly on the Woolly Mammoth, second baseman. Woolly Mammoths were the fourth team added as an extension team. It was originally the Unicorns, the Hoppers, and the Beavers, and now the, the Beavers now have a Western Division foe in the Mammoths. So that one bounces in, 1-2. and two. Now the count on Lawson. Yeah, it's a good pitch there from McKenzie, 0-2, oh, but you want to be careful, of course, with the bases loaded. Don't want to give Lawson anything to hit, but at the same time, you don't want to let anything get too far away from your catcher behind the dish, especially with Brandon Cuddy over there on third base. Not the fastest first baseman we've seen, but definitely not the slowest either. The 1-2. Just missed outside. Fans reacted as they thought that was on the outer part of the zone, however, just missed to the outside part of it. A little Bob Uecker action over there. Just a bit <laughs> outside. <laughs> McKenzie ready for the 2-2. Shot down the right field line. It'll go pretty well foul. So want to mention while we have a second here, we have a little different lineup defensively for the Beavers here in this ball game. The left fielder in last game, Daniel Oliveri, switches over to center field. James Batley is out for this game. Ryan Smith remains out there in right field, but he's actually not wearing number 20. He's actually supporting number 12 out there, so there's a little bit of confusion. So Smith is actually out there in right field as Lawson fouls off the 2-2 offer. And then there's also a new face out there in left field, the man who was at second base last game, Rob Pauler, is actually out there in left field. And then as far as the infield goes, over at third base is Helsel. He was at first base in game one. And then Mercado stays at short. Rulis goes from third to second. And then Hranik, who in last game was the DH, is over at first now. Adam Gauthier comes in, and he's the catcher in this second game. He had the day, or excuse me, the game off in game one. So a little update there as things are still getting sort of situated up here in the press box after game one. Yeah, it was a pretty quick turnaround trying to get the lineups and you know, not everything goes as planned. We had to wait a little bit down there. So it has been fairly a fairly quick turnaround, but we're making do with what we have. McKenzie has run the count full, runners in motion. High fly ball, left field, way back, track wall, and it is gone! Grand slam home run, Jalen Lawson. Lawson with the home run last night. Had the big double back in the fifth inning of game one. And I'll tell you what, ladies and gentlemen, this man is heating up tremendously. Not sure if it's that Alabama heat that we're playing in nowadays, after the first few weeks of the season, mix of rain and then the mid-50s weather, Jalen Lawson getting hot with the weather. A big time hit for the man out of Alabama, as you mentioned. Really got a, under that one. The ball carried out of here with the heat definitely flying out of the yard. And that was fun to watch. And Jalen Lawson, the little guy, get it out of the yard in a hurry. Yeah, tough, uh, tough start here for Cameron McKenzie, who's in his third start with these Birmingham Bloomfield Beavers. On the ground in the gap between short and third. Nice diving play there. Unable to complete the play. And at this point, you just hope Helsel's okay. Yeah, and it, Helsel with a very good effort to get that ball in the first place. And it looks like he did something to that left shoulder, which is what he is grabbing right now. Yeah, he slid on his chest across 
the diamond over there and maybe just lost a chest hair or two. Might have just gotten a nice little rug burn sliding from his right to his left. Glad to see it's nothing as far as bones or muscles go. He looks to be just fine. He brushed everything off and uh, just got a, the wind knocked out of him a little bit. Take a breather here for a second and he'll be ready to get back into action. But Thomas reaching there. They put that one down in the books as a base knock. So the hits continue here for the Mammoths. Jackson Smith looks at a ball. And yeah, once again, that was a great effort down there at third base. Smith once again looks at one sail away, 2-0. Got a feel for Mr. Cameron McKenzie, who through his first two starts of the season, 11 innings, he's allowed just four earned runs in those two starts, nine hits, four walks, but 14 strikeouts. Swing and a miss, runner goes in time. Wow, I thought he had got there. Nice throw by Hunter Wood, and that will end the Mammoths. Part of the first inning, on to the bottom of the first inning, we'll be back with more. You're watching the US PBL YouTube channel. And we're back for the bottom of the first inning. Beavers will get their first cuts. And the man they'll be facing is Joseph Mack. Yeah. His first pitch is in there for a strike. Rich, what do you have on Mr. Mack? Yeah, so Mack in his first start here with the Westside Willie Mammoths. He pitched on the 19th against the Unicorns. That one's hit high in the air. Fairly deep left center field. Diesel waiting under it will make the catch one away. Yeah, on the season, Mack, in those three innings, he er gave up an earned run, two hits, four walks, and a strikeout. Not a bad outing, but for the West Side Willie Mammoths, you're hoping that you can get at least four good innings, maybe five out of the left-hander. 
as they had just the one pitcher after McQueen, Mr. Finnegan, Jack Finnegan, pitched in relief, earned the save. Thomas Rulis, Mr. Reliable for the Beavers, will step up. Hits one center field, once again, fairly deep, but pretty routine out there for Kitson, who hauls it in. Now quick two outs. Nice job by Joseph Mack, getting two pretty efficient outs. Rob Pollard, the second baseman at the plate now. Pollard actually in left field. Pollard had played in at second base in game one and then got switched around. The Beavers have really switched up their entire yeah, the lineup defensive received. alignment. It's, uh, it's a little different, so still playing a little bit of catch up here in this one. As he looks at a strike on the outer part of the plate. Owen won the count on Pauler. That one bends in there. Nice pitch by Mack. Started off at the hip of Pauler, ended up right down the heart of the plate. Quickly ahead, 0 2, 32 down in the frame. That one missed high and away, 1 and 2. Not a bad pitch by any means there with an 0 2 count. Throw something that looks good coming out of the hand and then. It was too high in the strike or out of the strike zone. Pauler holds off on it though. That one looked good, and it is. Joseph Mack gets Robert Pauler looking, and that'll retire the side for the Beavers in the first. We'll be back with more. You're watching the US PBL YouTube channel. Back for the top of the second inning. McKenzie back to work, fires in a strike. Jackson Smith, the man out of Salem, Oregon, will take his cuts. 250 coming into today's action. Big bender, missed on the outer part of the plate. Want to mention tomorrow Memorial Day at the ballpark, not only do we have baseball, but the first 750 fans get uh, Star-spangled sunglasses, and it's also Dollar Day at the ballpark. Dollar hot dogs, dollar chips, and dollar sodas. Sounds like a steal to me. Not McKenzie bad, right? ready for the one-two, and it's fouled back by Jackson Smith. Right back to the screen. Yeah, Memorial Day and baseball kind of go together, kind of like the Fourth of July in baseball. Just America's pastime at its finest. McKenzie ready for the one-two pitch. Bounces in, we've seen that once already. This time, bounce in 
maybe even closer to the mound, probably five, six feet away from home plate. Count now even on Smith, the catcher today. That is Flair down the right field line. It'll get out of play foul. Count remains two and two. The Mammoths put up a four spot in the first behind that Jalen Grand Slam. That was something to watch as Smith fouls it back once again. Yeah, Jalen Lawson, not the biggest guy. He's He definitely has some weight, but he's not the tallest or strongest guy in the field, but he's really turned the heat on with his bat in the last couple of games. As McKenzie gets Smith fishing, throw on to first to complete the strikeout. One down here in the second. And even though Jackson Smith was taken out there via the swing and miss, I'll tell you what, this West Side Woolly Mammoth batting lineup throughout the season, they got a lot of guys who can hit the baseball. And, you know, they got Josh Mason at the top of this rotation. Not a ton of guys with, you know, lights out stuff compared to a guy like McKenzie, even though Mac is, of course, out pitching McKenzie as we speak, just haven't really seen any guys have an outing, you know, where double-digit strikeouts, no runs, things of that nature. Right. It's really been the offense that has carried the Mammoths so far this season through their first five games as they sit at 3-2 and two coming into this second game. Beavers, of course, losing in game one. Now they're at 3-4. and four. Kimbrough came into the, to today's action. Hitless was able to tally his first hit in a Mammoths uniform as strike one comes across the plate. One and one now the count on David Kimbrough, the second. Here's the one one. That one misses away. It looked like a slider that just slipped out of the hands of McKenzie. Kimbrough from Atlanta, Georgia. So another guy from the south used to this heat. And on a day like this, you need to be used to this heat. McKenzie misses with that one. Three and one now the count. You, how much do you think the weather really comes into effect with these players. Do you think it's do you think it plays with them? I think it matters honestly on kind of where you come from. You got guy like you were saying, you got guys who come up from down south and you got guys who live who have lived in Michigan their whole lives and you know, the hotter it is, sometimes that can be strainful and strenuous on the mind and body as Kimbrough stays alive, puts this one out of play, but I mean, I'd rather have it be too hot than not hot enough. Oh, yeah, fouling off a, a pitch in 30-degree weather, that's that's painful. And if any of these guys in the USPBL who are from Michigan, they have definitely played in that type of weather at least at some point in their career along the way to getting here too. So got to imagine they're pretty happy with the weather that we're seeing as far as maybe it's a little hot out there, but like we said, we'll definitely take the latter than the – no doubt about that. Kimbrough has fouled off the last few pitches to stay alive. Three and two the count. Here is the three two. Breaking ball. Froze Kimbrough. Strike three. McKenzie starting to look like his old self. Two down quickly here in the top of the second. How about that ring up right there from Gary Wagonshuts behind home plate? Enthusiastic. A little, little extra behind it right there. Uh, you know, Mr. Wagonshuts, it's not official, but with the track record that we've seen so far in 2018, it looks like he might be as a part of our umpiring crew for nearly every single game here this season. I'd say he's the head umpire. McKenzie now facing Tommy Fiesel, who flew out in his first plate appearance. Yeah, Fiesel two for four in game one, two singles, a run scored, and a stolen base to his credit. Did fly out to right field once, infield, outfield at normal depth but there is a decent gap out there in right center. And that one's fouled back two and one. Talking about emphatic strike three calls, back in the day, my brother, Here we go. Sam, if you're listening, hey Sam, but he was in an all-star game, fifth grade. The umpire rung him up on strikes and did a cartwheel. Oh my goodness. So that, that was the most emphatic one I've seen. Two and one, swing and a miss. And just humiliating for the kids who had to deal with <laughs> having a cartwheel <laughs> done to them after already striking out. Yeah, that's something. You don't see that every day, but I guess if you do, it's probably in uh, Little League. So. Yep. Two and two the count on Fiesel. Tap foul. 
Not really sure how he made any contact with that. That breaking ball had some bite to it. Fiesel at the last second, getting a piece of it, staying alive. And if you're the man on the mound, Mr. Cam McKenzie, you're going to take any out you can get as early and as often as you possibly can after that first inning. The 2 2 swing and a miss. So McKenzie starting to get more comfortable on the mound, retires the sides here in the second. Beavers will be up in a moment. We'll be back with more. This is the USPBL YouTube channel. Welcome back, bottom of the second inning action here at Jimmy John's Field in Utica. Jack Rannick, the designated hitter, will lead things off for the Beavers. Joseph Mack, the lefty, getting ready to work. Tap foul. Mack did a very nice job in the first, pretty efficient, and uh, got these Beavers out in order. Mack getting ready once more. That one flared left center field. Outfielders converging. Looks like it's going to be Kitson who again makes a nice running play. He's been all over the place in the last couple of nights and once again makes a pretty nice play out there. Yeah, that ball dead left center field and you know, as the old saying goes, that is anybody's ball, but when the center fielder takes charge, that is his outfield out there. Not even having anything to do with that catch yesterday. Drew Kitson taking charge out here in this outfield and really making a name for himself in the USPBL throughout this first couple of weeks, at Sky least defensively. Yeah, for sure. Skyler Mercado, man out of the Bronx, steps in and looks at ball one, ready now for the 1-0 pitch. Swing and a miss, got in on the hands, and Skyler really couldn't do much with that as... He swung right through it, one and one. Here is the one one. Swing and a miss again. That was a breaking ball that Mercado got out in front on and was unable to bar barrel it up. Defense, not really a shift, but playing pretty deep on the middle infielders. Lawson, a couple steps on the grass, the one, two, just missed high. Looked pretty good from up here. Must have missed a hair upstairs. Now the count even on Skyler. That one bounces in, three and two, now the count. It's a really good eye up there. Mercado's been an aggressive hitter so far this season. Try and 
be a little more patient up at that plate. He does a good job on that 2-2 breaking ball. Here's the 3-2. That bounces in again, leading Mercado to first base. A one-out walk. That is the 15th pitch of the ball game for Joseph Mack, who's been fairly efficient up to this point along that walk, but for the most part, through these first couple of hitters in the lineup, has done a nice job. Now Hunter Wood will step to the box. Excuse me. Is this is this Gothier? Nope, you're good. That is Mr. Wood. All right, I have so many different lineups right now. <laughs> it was all kind of a <laughs> a rush, but we're figuring it out as we go. Wood ready for the 1-0. That one is in there for a strike. One and one the count. Here's the 1-1. One, one. That one misses low and in. So it's going to be a long day of baseball. It already has been a long day of baseball, but once we get back, it'll be about time for game seven. What do you... What are your thoughts on game seven tonight? Yeah, I mean, Boston, clearly the better team, but you got the best player in the league, best player of the generation in LeBron James. That's Arguably of all time, really. Yeah, that is, uh, that is the story that will unfold. And realistically, the story of the game will be where LeBron James is in sort of like a fatigue standpoint, you know. He's doing I'd imagine he's pretty tired. He's doing with, a lot uh, of the work. Putting the team on his back, though, on some Marshawn Lynch uh, – Ask performances. Yeah, the the Marshawn Lynch was one play, and I think that play actually pretty accurately describes what LeBron is doing right now. Exactly. Anyway, back to baseball, three and one. That is tap behind home plate foul. Mack with this one walk, that's all he's had to deal with up to this point. Hunter Wood, Kentucky native. So another uh, one of these players from the South, if you want to call Kentucky the South. Here's the 3-2. Bounces in again. Last 3-2 to Mercado bounced in. The 3-2 to Wood does the same thing. We got runners on first and second. That's the second walk of the inning for Joseph Mack. And that will bring up Daniel Oliveri, the left fielder. Oliveri off to a very slow start. 095, his average coming into the ballpark today. Yeah, Oliveri in that last game did have a single, went one for three, a stolen base, and a walk to his credit. So it is good to see him have some sort of productivity in game one because slow starts are one thing, but once it gets a couple weeks into the season, that's when you really – you need to get your act together and start performing. As now there's a little mound visit. Three players meet at the mound and they'll go back to their respective positions. Mac has fallen behind 2 and 0 on Daniel Oliveri. That one's in there. For a strike, good breaking ball, two and one. Yeah, much needed strike right there from Joseph Mack. Did not want to get a count three and zero oh with two runners on and one out. As Mack steps off the mound, off the rubber, re locks himself in. Beavers a good chance to cut into this lead. That one misses away, three and one now. Now the trouble really starting to brew for the Mammoths. You never know, maybe Mac isn't as comfortable out of the stretch. Whatever the case is, he needs to bear down and get this out. The 3-1. Grounded foul. Nice play down there at the third base coach position. By the Beaver skip. K-1. 
count full. This is first plate appearance in game two. The 3-2, runners in motion, excuse me, Mercado was in motion. And that was it. So you don't really, you sometimes see a double steal in that situation. Three, two, one out. But the runners will go back to their bases. Oliveri getting ready for the three, two in the gap. Right center field, trouble. Diving effort, can't get it was Kitson. That'll go all the way to the wall. One run is in to score. The second one to the plate. Lost in the throw. Not in time. Two runs are in. Four to two. And the Beavers have cut this lead in half. How on the Oliveri double. So how about that piece of hitting from Daniel Oliveri? Much needed. You mentioned he had that below 100 batting average coming into today's contest. Had the base knock in last game and a stolen base to his credit, but he... Clears out the bases and brings in both Mercado and Wood to put the Beavers on the board. You gotta like to see that if you're Chris Newell. Yeah, really just split the gap. Kitson made a, another very good effort at that ball, was unable to haul it in, allowing two runs to come on in and score. First pitch to Helsel, strike one. A lot of action in the early parts of this game. Mack was in control in inning number one. Got out back to the second inning and kind of struggled. And we're going to see if he can get out of this inning with less or no more damage done. Helsel fouls that one right back to the screen. Owen to the count on Christian, who came in today into today, 286. That one scorched, look out. That'll get back out of play. Helsel, Pennsylvania native. One of the guys who's probably more accustomed to what Michigan has to offer weather-wise. The 0-2 breaking ball fooled Helsel and nothing he could do except watch it go in for strike three. Two down now as Helsel walks back to the dugout. Now Gothier will take his first cuts of the day. First pitch misses upstairs. Mack gave up two runs on that double, trying to limit the damage here. A 1-0, driven left field down a base hit. They're gonna send the run home. The throw to the plate is cut off. Throw to the plate once more, and he is out at the plate. They cut off the throw, which I think could have got there on the fly by itself, however, cut off and thrown out at the plate. And now the, the Beavers will have to settle for two runs. We'll be back with more. You're watching the U.S. PBL YouTube channel.
Drew Kitson will step up to the plate for the Mammoths, the man who, as we've said probably dozens of times, made that spectacular catch last <laughs> night, but it's worth saying again. Yeah, I remember before the doubleheader day, we were going to wonder how many times we were going to, in fact, bring up that top ten play from Mr. Kitson. I believe I said over, under six. Yeah, yeah we're, we're, double we're, that. We're past that. <laughs> Owen one. The count on the USPBL celebrity. That one bounces in. One and one. McKenzie was tagged for that grand slam in the first by Jalen Lawson. Since then, he's settled down. He struck off the side last frame. And you hope to see him continue that trend of uh, strikeouts. It's fun to watch. The 1-1. One, one. Pop straight up. It's going to get back into the seats. Kenzie ahead, one and two. Just missed off the outer edge. Kitson did not offer at it. Two and two the count. Two, two. In there for a strike, inside part of the plate. Kitson was frozen up. And one out, that's four consecutive strikeouts for Mr. McKenzie, a.k.a. Big Mac. Yeah, the Big Mac with, like you mentioned, four straight strikeouts. Not as impressive as his first outing where he had retired eight of nine, but yeah, after, that, after that, that was something special. Yeah, after that tough start with Lawson taking him yard to bring in four runs. He's done a really nice job to settle down this west side lineup. Here's Cuddy. Grounds one to the right side, gobbled up by Rulis. Throws on to first. Two down. And that'll bring up the DH for today's ball game. Tyler Pagano standing in. He was also the DH in the previous game. He had that two-run homer and RBI single in last game. Really starting to heat up. Yeah, he's playing really well as of late. It says on our website that he's also listed as an outfielder, but Pagano predominantly so far here in 2018 has been the DH, and I mean... It'll be tough for Pagano to get a spot out there in this outfield with the West Side Willie Mammoths with you got Fiesel, Kitson, and Whisker. Those guys most likely the three that will roam Jimmy John's outfield throughout this season for Team West Side. But before we forget about it, let's talk a little bit about these Flintstone uh, jerseys the West Side Mammoths have put that together here. Some of my favorites. The league does a great job as the 0-2 bounces in. But the league has done a very nice job with their jerseys. And the Flintstones jerseys are probably my favorites in the entire league. You don't see a lot of professional baseball teams wearing jerseys as fresh as the ones we're seeing here. The one, two. Breaking ball just missed. I'd say it hasn't got this hot all day. It's probably at its hottest point. And the good news is from here, it's most likely going to descend closer to bearable but right now it's three and two on Tyler Pagano the man who came into today below 200 I don't think that's the case anymore he's really played a nice couple of games to this point the full count pitch breaking ball Pagano got out in front of it Mercado gobbles it up he's gonna have to hurry and gets Pagano by a step to retire the side We'll be back with more. You're watching the US PBB USPBL <laughs> YouTube channel.
And we're back. First pitch to Ryan Smith is tapped foul. Back to the top of this Birmingham Bloomfield order we go. Smith on the afternoon 0 for 1 with a fly out to Fiesel in left field that started the home half of the first. The 0-1 misses in tight. Even the count up at 1-1. One and one. Smith in game one, one for four, single, a fly out, a line out and another fly out. The 1-1 one, one is skied right field, fairly deep. And it's gonna get out of here. That one appeared to be a lazy fly ball and it somehow snuck out of the yard. I don't know about you, but that looked like it was either gonna be a foul ball out of play or a double, but a home run it is. And if you take a look out there to dead center field on our broadcast, you see that flag blowing a little bit towards right field. Gotta imagine that might have had something to do with why that ball got carried out there. Just 320 down that right field line. That one just going over, but Mr. Smith and these Beavers will take it. It's just a one run game. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure Smith got all of that one. It looks like he looked like it was just gonna be a pretty average fly out to right field, but Inst now. Instead the leadoff homer. Exactly. And now Rulis is at the plate, Mr. Reliable for the Beavers batting champion last season for the champion Beavers. Ground ball, tough play, nice play. Throw into first. Got him! Wow! Had one yesterday. And that was a tough play by Kimbrough. Dive, stands up in a hurry, and gets Rulis, who isn't slow by any means. That's your 1 800 Hansons get it done play of the game. Mr. Kimbrough, you know, not as spectacular as what we saw yesterday in center field from Drew Kitson, but I'll tell you what, that is one heck of a play from Kimbrough, not only to lay out completely to his left and get that baseball, but then to retire Rulis on the throw over to first base on a bang-bang play. I mean, you really can't ask for much more than that from your man over there at the hot corner if you're Mr. Joseph Mack out there on the bump. Yeah, Rulis definitely thought he had a base hit, and so did I. And Kimbrough proved us both wrong as Pollard swings through the 0-1, now making it 0-2. Pollers had a tough day, struck out looking, well, excuse me, except for one at-bat. <laughs> Pollers struck out looking, had that home run that drove in two of the four runs for the Beavers back in the first game. 0-2, the count on Robert. Another one of these guys in the league who got off to a relatively slow start, but as a lot of these guys do, he will heat up as well. Is that one driven in the gap? Right center field, pretty simple play out there by Whisker. He'll haul it in for the second out of the inning. While I have a minute, I wanna thank my girlfriend Marina for tuning in today. Always nice to get the support. That's one of the cool things that I've you know, been able to take advantage of broadcasting for about four years now, professionally at least. It's always fun to have the fam, friends, significant others tune in and support. Just like some of you parents out there supporting your sons on this ball diamond. Yep, Loving, we, need, we well, need support too. Yeah, you know, it, it's, uh, it's a long journey, not just for the players, but if you work here too, it's, uh, it's always a long summer, but a fun one, no doubt about that. Hrenik taps that one off his foot, and he's shaken up. I was going to say, I don't know if it was a tap. It was more of a uh, Rocket slam. to his foot, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that never feels good. We saw it a couple times in game one. But, yeah, there's, there's no fun way that that happens. When you foul it off your ankle, you feel it for the next couple of days. One, one is... Swung and missed by Hranik. Now the one-two. 
hit pretty hard. Lawson, what a play. Throws on a first, gets Hranic. And the stretch at first. Yeah, completes wow. it. Wow. He holds on over there at first base, is so, Cuddy. So we saw some spectacular defense this half inning. And we'll take a break and we'll, we'll be back with more on the US PBL YouTube channel. And we're back as the Woolly Mammoths will take their cuts in the fourth inning. And in between innings, we actually saw some history, not, not real history, but fun history made at the ballpark. Woolly, the Woolly Mammoths mascot, actually picked up his first win <laughs> against uh, one of the interns running around the bases. Usually it's against a kid, and today it was against a college kid, but a win nonetheless. And that's a huge. That's some huge news for the league. You know, the, the Woolly Mammoths just continue to win here on this day. You wonder if Cameron McKenzie will have anything to say about that as he goes out for his fourth inning of work. Whisker pops that one up straight back. McKenzie's ahead, 0-1 to start the fourth. The Mammoths got off to that quick 4-0 lead thanks to the grand slam by Jalen Lawson. However, the Beavers have clawed back with three runs of their own, three unanswered runs, that is. And now McKenzie is ahead 0-2. Oh Whisker with a relatively open stance, getting ready for the 0-2. Swing and a miss. McKenzie, another strikeout. McKenzie not messing around whatsoever. Got Whisker ahead in the count 0-2, oh throws a fastball. Not right down the heart of the plate, but probably on that outside part of it. And Whisker couldn't do anything with it. He chases after it, expecting something else out of the hand of Mr. Mc excuse me, Mr. McKenzie. But McKenzie wins that battle. But as far as this upcoming battle, Mr. Lawson fully ahead of McKenzie in today's outing. Yep, four big ones on the board thanks to Jalen Lawson. As the breaking ball there fooled. Mr. Lawson, but luckily, it missed outside the zone, 1-0. and Fooled me, too. Looked pretty good from up here. Yeah, it was pretty filthy. 1-0. and That one painted the black. 1-1. One and one. That just caught the edge of the zone, and really, Lawson could only look at that. There was no way he was putting the bat on the ball. You know, I, I want to say that, but I was shocked that after seeing a breaking ball, for a strike, if you're a batter, you gotta expect a fastball to be riding in there at somewhere. And then once you got that figured out, you kinda just need to realize if it's gonna be a ball or a strike, and that one was right about 
down the heart of the plate. Lawson just deciding to let that one travel by, and instead now he's ahead in the count two and one here after looking at another ball. Yeah, he's looking a little uncomfortable at the plate compared to that first A-B. He's a little off balance through the first couple of pitches of the at-bat. However, Lawson is heating up, and I wouldn't be surprised if he got some good contact on it. Yeah, there's no room to be hesitant in this great game of baseball. Lawson going to have to protect here with two strikes. Here's the 2-2. Two -two. That one just missed as well. He's McKenzie's been flirting with that outside part of the plate all afternoon since he got on the hill, and he's gotten some calls, but there's been some like that which he just misses. And the 3-2. That one misses high. Sometimes it pays off to be short. <laughs> As Jalen Lawson is aboard with one out. I was going to say, just ask Luke, but yeah. fortunately our pal had to go. You can't, you can't do that to him when he's not here. Right, <laughs> right, exactly. But yeah, we'll, we'll give him some, we'll give him some about that later. Now Jordan Thomas standing in, reached on a base knock back in the first, but was caught stealing on the put out from Adam Gauthier. And the first pitch of the at bat misses away once again. Thomas, native of New Orleans, another one of these guys from the south. And another one of these guys who's probably loving the heat. The 1-0 misses inside, nearly hit Thomas. Love the approach we've seen from Thomas here in this second game compared to the first. Game of adjustments that it is. Thomas was over four with three strikeouts in game one and now already one for one with a single. And That one hit high. Straight away center field. Oliveri under it and he'll corral it in for the second out of the fourth inning. Well, two gone and one on. So and let's, let's Jackson Smith will step in. Let's talk a little bit about Mr. McKenzie here. First inning, he faced off against seven batters, almost eight before Thomas was caught stealing. He had thrown two pitches against Smith, but since then, he's not allowed any base knocks. Retired the side, striking everybody out in the second. A one-two-three inning with a strikeout, two groundouts in the third, and then working here, trying to get the Mammoths out almost in order minus that little bump in the road to Lawson. It's just going to be one of those days for Jalen, but outside of that, a good job thus far for McKenzie outside of that first inning jitters. Yeah, and I think every pitcher goes through some struggles at some point. That's to be expected as w Smith swings through the 0-1 pitch, but the, the thing that separates good pitchers from great pitchers is their ability to bounce back from adversity because you're going you're gonna get hit around sometimes, but we've seen McKenzie do a great job of it today where he's been able to bounce back and he's ahead right now, 0-2. Runner on the move. They got him if he holds on. Mercado's unable to hold on. And a stolen base. They had him beat by what? Ten feet? Yeah, they had him by a couple of steps. Lawson getting in there as Mercado did not be or did not get that baseball in the mitt on time, I actually thought that he might have been able to try and grab it barehanded and tag Lawson on a bang bang play because Lawson was that far caught, but unfortunately for the Beavers, they could not handle it. And look at that, there he goes again. Lawson, very aggressive at the plate and now on the base paths. And Lawson, not necessarily the fastest guy in the field. He does have some speed, but that he just got lucky stealing that base at second. He was toast, but he luckily got in. Wonder what was going through his mind trying to swipe third as well. Yeah, Helsel playing back. There are two outs. You never want to make the final out at third base, but Lawson aggressive again, taking step after step. I'd be shocked to not see him go again. And time is now called. And yeah, that aggressiveness has paid off to this point. He's hit a grand slam, he's stolen a base, he's drawn a walk. So that's just how he plays the game, and that's, in my opinion, playing the game the right way. Don't forget last night had a home run as well, so back-to-back -back days with home runs. 
a three-run homer last night and then a grand slam here today. Two swings of the bat, seven RBIs for Jalen Lawson. Some guys aren't even getting their first RBI of the season. Lawson having a great tenure thus far here in 2018, and he was a big part of the reason why the Mammoths made it to the championship game last season. They ended up in fourth place out of all four teams at the end of the regular season, and then they won two semi-games and then made it all the way to the championship where they that eventually one lost. Flared to center. Oliveri originally took a step back. Now in, and there's going to be no play at home. Lawson in to score, so his aggressiveness now pays off. And a base hit extends the lead to 5-3. to three. Oliveri out there in center field. He was in left game one. Not sure if the approach is different from a center fielder standpoint. I was never fast enough to even think about playing outfield in my playing days, but... Looked like Oliveri just didn't get a good jump on that baseball. The ball was clearly uh, shallow. He took two steps back, though. And, yeah, you're, you're as a baseball player, as an outfielder, you're supposed to take your first step back. That's textbook. And he took two or three extra but he, after he that. But he did take more than he should have, and because of it, that ball falls down, and Smith reaches on that RBI single. Kimbrough fouls one back. He's 0 for 1 today. Did get his first hit in USPBL action. The wind picking up has really picked up as the afternoon has progressed. Owen won the count, McKenzie ready. Good breaking ball, just caught the outside part of the plate, Owen two. And going back to Lawson's aggressiveness, he really got them that run single-handedly. That was, that's why aggressive baseball pays off. Owen two, bounces in, and now Smith will get into second because of that little miscue behind the plate. Yeah, no stolen base to his credit. Wild pitch on the scorebooks for Cameron McKenzie. He's trying to fight back in this ball game after giving up that grand slam in the first two Lawson, but has given up the one run here and, of course, Lawson part of it as well. You know, I think the Mammoths are really taking advantage of one of McKenzie's weaker parts of his game, which is holding on base runners. And I think it's really gotten to him because most of the damage done, actually all the damage done today has been with runners on. I'll piggyback onto that if we stay here, but we won't, so we'll talk about it when we get back. McKenzie is able to retire Kimbrough with that strikeout. We will be back with more. You're watching the US PBL YouTube channel. So we're back at Jimmy John's Field for the bottom of the fourth inning. And during that break, former pitcher Rich Borland pitched at Macomb Community College back in the day. He had some, some pretty good information about McKenzie. I was mentioning towards the end of the half inning how he was having trouble holding runners on. Rich, what can you tell us about that as a former pitcher yourself? Yeah, so as we kind of joke around in the Jim Price, you know, speaking of the art of pitching, a part of that art of pitching is attack, being able to attack the running game. And when I talk about attacking the running game, I mean being able to focus on the batter at the plate, but at the same time control the guys that are on the base pass. And in order to be able to make these players feel uneasy or 
unaware of exactly how you're going to be able to mix up some of these batters and timings as Mercado starts off the Beavers in the home half of the fourth with a line drive single to left. He's the 1-800 Hansen's hitter of the game. He just won some people some gift certificates to Hansen's, but being able to focus on runners without really giving your 100% attention to them, because of course you still have to attack the batter at the plate, but we'll see it here with Joseph Mack and Mercado over at first base, but you have to be able to mix up your timing on the mound. I think the pitcher that does that the best in all of MLB baseball, I wonder if you know who I'm going to say, former Tigers pitcher Max Scherzer. He is an animal when it comes to mixing up timing and getting inside of the heads of some of these base runners, but we'll see if Mack can do a little bit better job than McKenzie as some of the West Side Willie Mammoths have done a really good job on the base pass so far today. 1-0 on the ground, could be two. Bobbled there at shortstop. Jordan Thomas had trouble with it. Everyone is safe. First and second, nobody out. And I, I, I didn't have uh, Scherzer in mind. Looking back at that, I, I do remember he was very good at it and still is today. But a lot of bullpen arms who aren't necessarily the best with their pickoff moves, you have to be good at holding runners on. You have to be good with timing because at the end of the day, if you're – letting base runners get an extra base or two bases, that's the difference in winning and losing a baseball game. Oliveri up to the play with two men aboard and nobody out. They're going to lay down a bunt. Oliveri will get the job done, throw on to first one away, but he will get high fives as he head back to the Beavers' dugout. He did his job. That's all he can ask for. One, you has to lay down a sacrifice bunt and a beautiful one right there. Yeah, a nice job at the plate so far for Daniel Oliveri in this second game. After having a single in three at-bats in game one and a stolen base to his credit, he had a double back in the second inning here today but was thrown out at the plate via the throw from Tommy Fiesel back in the second, but that sacrifice bunt puts runners at second and third with just one out. Now Christian Helsel trying to maybe tie this game or maybe take the lead or... Maybe a base knock will cut the lead in half. Either way, a good spot here for the Beavers as Joseph Mack is going to try and get through this tough process. Yeah, and all of a sudden, the tying run at second base was looking like the Mammoths kind of had control of this game, and then the Beavers come right back and have a chance to tie it up with a base hit. The 0-1 to Helsel bends in there for a strike on the outer edge. 0-2 quickly on Christian Helsel. It's a great 0-1 pitch right there from Joseph Mack. The breaking ball on the back door. Nothing really Christian Helsel could do about it. He just got kind of froze on that pitch, and because of it, he's down here 0-2 early, and he's seen both pitches from Mack now. You wonder what he's going to bring. The 0-2, chopped foul. Once again, to the third base coach and manager of the Beavers. Mr. Chris Newell, of course, over there at the third base coaching box. Joseph Mack, the 0-2 again. That one lunged at and driven back into the seats. Foul. Still 0-2. I want to give a little shout out myself. We saw earlier on the big screen, not sure if you saw it or not on Twitter or not, Drew, but our Director of Baseball Operations, Mr. Justin Orenduff, celebrating a birthday today. So happy birthday to him. Of course, can't ask for much more than two games on a birthday. You know, you'd know, you be lucky to get one, but now you get two. Can't really have a much better birthday than that. And he's a huge part of everything we do with this league. There's no doubt about that. Mac getting ready for the 0-2. Runners on second and third. That one bounces in, a pretty good 0-2 pitch. Nothing great to hit, and still a pretty good pitch. Helsel came into today, 286. So a pretty solid start. Still looking for his first hit of the game, though. Struck out looking back in the second. The 1-2. That one, did he hit it off himself? I believe he did. Did Helsel? So it'll stay one and two. Mammoth with five hits, one error. 
Beavers with four hits and no errors. And the important stat is the Mammoth lead five to three in the bottom of the fourth. Elsel holds that bat, lays it on his shoulder. Mack comes again with a one two, a little frustrated that he still is dealing with the pesky Helsel. Hasn't been able to retire him at this at bat. The one two again, this one on the ground. Looks like it will get the run in. Throw on to first and Helsel is retired. Jordan Thomas thought about going home with it but the infield was at normal depth so it was gonna be pretty tough to get that run at home. The Beavers make it a 5-4 ball game on the RBI ground out from Helsel and Adam Gothier will step in. Productive outs, getting the job done here for the Beavers as they slowly inch back to this west side lead. And now that I think about it, Beavers have yet to have the lead here today in this double header. Mammoths have been in front the entire afternoon, so the Beavers with an opportunity to inch at least in a tied spot with the West Side Willie Mammoths as Adam Gauthier looks at ball one. Lawson shaded up the middle. The 1 0 on the way and misses way high. 2 0 the count on the man out of Naples, Florida. Beautiful town, may I mention. I'd love to be in Naples. Maybe not at this time of year. A little hot, but as the 2 0 was in there for a strike, 2 and 1 the count. Two outs, man on second. Beavers have already had one run across the plate in this frame. 5-4, your score. Swing and a miss on the 2-1, a big cut from Gauthier. And he'll have to go back for the 2-2 offering. Mac set and ready to go. That one fouled back. Count remains. Two and two. Good job to fight that one back to the screen. Mac trying his best to get out of this jam here in the fourth. The leadoff batter, Skyler Mercado, singled, got on. Hunter Woods singled as well. And then the sacrifice bunt from Daniel Oliveri moved them both over. The ground out from Helsel. Drove in Mercado. That's where we stand here in this home half of the fourth. But the Beavers trying to get at least one more in this half inning to maybe tie the game with the Mammoths. Over there at second base is Hunter Wood, the designated hitter for today's second game. He was behind the dish in game one, so got to imagine those legs are a little bit tired out there at second base. The 2-2 was fouled off, so we're going to do it again, and this time swing and a miss. Throw on to first is in time. Gauthier is out and so are the Beavers. We're gonna head to the top of the fifth inning. You're watching the US PBL YouTube channel.
Well, there's a new pitcher in the game for the Beavers as the Mammoths get ready to go to the plate. It's Ross Vance. But first, we're going to go through McKenzie's final line. Pitched four complete innings, five hits, five runs. All five of those runs were earned. Two walks and seven strikeouts. So all in all, not what you'd like to see. He did have some bright spots. Finished with seven Ks. But onto the bullpen now, the Beavers go. Ross Vance will take the hill, the lefty. Yeah, the left-hander out of McKinney, Texas, making his fifth appearance from the bullpen here in 2018. So far through his four relief appearances, he's thrown 3.1 innings while allowing four hits. He's given up four earned runs on those four hits. He's given up four walks, has three strikeouts, a 10.80 ERA. He had the loss back on May the 23rd against the Utica Unicorns where he pitched .1 innings, allowed three earned runs on no hits. Did have one walk against the four batters that he faced. And overall, Ross Vance, if you don't know, he was actually the first player to be taken out of the US PBL, taken by a major league affiliate, the St. Louis Cardinals. But he's back here now, trying to revamp his game and he'll deal with Tommy Fiesel to begin this top half of the fifth. Fiesel already ahead 1-0. Here's the 1-0. Tapped right back to the catcher Goth here. That looked like it caught one of those spots on his leg that isn't protected. So that's unfortunate to see and home plate umpire is going to give him some time to recover from that. He's all 0 for 2 in game 2. Came in 118, and that unfortunately has gone down. Fiesel, Midwest kid from Illinois, waiting on the 1 1. Swing and a miss there. Good changeup by Mr. Vance. Yeah, Vance, a crafty lefty out of this bullpen for the Beavers. He's got some dicey stuff, and part of it's in that delivery, he brings that high leg kick, kind of like Dontrell Willis from back in the day. And it'll mess with the timing and the approach of some of these hitters. And clearly Fiesel, a little timid here with Vance up there on the mound now compared to the fireballer in McKenzie. Vance ahead, 1-2 on Fiesel. A lot of moving parts to that delivery. Here it is. It was a slider that missed high and tight. Run the count even, two and two. And we saw another funky delivery, Heldman, in game one. Keeps hitters off balance just based off his delivery. That one flared down the right side. It's going to be a tough play, and there is no play as that one hits the warning track and bounces out of play. Yeah, part of the Jimmy John's field dynamics we talk about it almost every game how it's set up sort of like the Oakland Coliseum over there in Oakland a lot of room to make a crazy play but sometimes there's too much room and baseballs find their way out of the reach of some of these infielders and that was exactly what happened right there on that 2-2 pitch fans ready for the 2-2 now it misses away three and two the count now so we saw Vance get ahead now we're uh, to a full count so Fiesel a chance to reach 3-2 coming right now, and it misses away. So Tommy Fiesel's aboard, no outs, and another base runner for the Woolly Mammoths. Yeah, Fiesel uses speed on the base pass. Kitson, meanwhile, standing in, 0-2, coming into this at-bat, at least in game two. Game one, he had a double with an, with an RBI and a run scored in the first at-bat of the day, but since then... Four strikeouts as a part of this doubleheader and a fly out to center field. Kitson trying to get back on the right track. Yeah, Kitson's average south of 100, which obviously he made that catch, which is, I think, the 13th time we talked about it. <laughs> but it is time to perform at the plate. And if Kitson keeps this up, most likely won't be in the league for much longer. But once again, that could all change in a matter of a few at-bats. And obviously, Kitson is a capable player. That one hit high in the air, straight away center field. 
Oliveri didn't really move much. Ranges a couple steps back and hauls it in. One down. Still man on first. So one center fielder hits it to another. Kitson retired for the third time today. Second time he's hit a ball out to Oliveri out there in center field. Cuddy coming up with one out, one man on. Mam is trying to add on to this one run lead. If you're just joining us, Jalen Lawson, the starting second baseman for this West Side Woolly Mammoth lineup. He's having quite the afternoon. And he's had quite the last two games for the Woolly Mammoths. Runner in motion. The throw down is in time. So Tommy Fiesel is called out at second base trying to swipe that bag. Two down, nobody out now. That makes things a lot easier on Ross Vance. How about that toss from Adam Gothier behind the dish? That looked like he wasn't even thinking. He caught the ball and threw it right away, and that was exactly what you want to see if you're a Beaver fan. This one fly ball, similar spot to where Kitson hit it. Now Cuddy is retired. Mammoths are done for the inning, and we'll be back with more. You are watching the USPBL YouTube channel. We are back. New pitcher on the mound, but first we're going to go through Joseph Max line. Pitch four innings complete. Five runs, or five hits, excuse me. Four runs, four earned runs, two walks, and three Ks on the afternoon. His afternoon is, is complete, however. A new pitcher. What do you want to tell us about the new man on the hill, the lefty? Yeah, so the left-hander out of Orange County, California. It'll be number eight, Jake Angus. He's got just one outing under his belt in relief. It was against these Birmingham Bloomfield Beavers 10 short days ago. He went 1.2 innings, allowed one hit, no runs. Did have three walks, though. No strikeouts against the seven batters that he faced, but most importantly, no runs. So Want to get those walks down, though, for sure. Already behind 2-0 and now. Yeah, back to the top of this. Birmingham Bloomfield batting lineup. And the man at the plate, Ryan Smith, with that solo shot that creeped over the right field wall in the third inning. Yeah, just flipped it the opposite way. The wind helped him out. And I'm sure so did the warm weather because the ball does tend to carry 
further as the weather gets warmer. But 2-0 and now on Ryan Smith. Here's the 2-0. Tapper to second. Lawson's going to take it. And we'll get Smith by a step. The one down in the bottom of the fifth inning. So I'll tell you what, that last play right there, I'm really impressed. Even though it wasn't a crazy play, um, I want to give a little notice right there to the first baseman, Mr. Brandon Cuddy. Originally, you saw him start to break to the right to try and field that baseball, but then did a really smart job, realized that his second baseman, Jalen Lawson, would have been able to get to it in time. And with the big fella out there on the mound, 6'7", 225, would have been tough for him to beat Ryan Smith to the bag. So a really smart job there by Cuddy to realize that he should have made the smart play by going to the bag instead of going after the ball. And Lawson, in fact, gets the baseball and relays it over to him for out number one. A thing you don't really notice too often, but a good job there from Cuddy mentally to get out number one. 2-0 the count. And, yeah, you mentioned that, and as you mentioned that, it kind of brought up a play in Tigers history that <laughs> sticks with me, as it always does. But Armando Galarraga had that, well, he still deserves the perfect game. But you couldn't give me four Corvettes. Yeah, that was tough. But it's uh, now 2-1. and one. Angus pours in a strike. But what happened on that play where Miguel Cabrera easily could have gone to first base, <laughs> Guillen would have fielded it, and... There, would, there wouldn't have been a close play, mm. which I guess the, the man who's uh, kind of the, the anti-hero in Detroit is Jim Joyce. As a nice play and throw on to first by David Kimbrough, the second. But, yeah, that play, that, that's going to haunt me for a long time. And you bringing that up kind of yeah. just brought that back into my mind. But I remember a little, I was a little kid crying on the couch <laughs> and just disgust that my Tigers got robbed of history, really. Yeah, words were said that probably can't be repeated here on the broadcast. I, I wasn't old enough to know those at that <laughs> time. <laughs> yeah, well, I got a few years on you, so I had a little bit under my belt. I was probably right around, you know, middle teenage years. But, yeah, that one will definitely haunt Tigers fans for all of eternity. Armando Galarraga had quite the day and unfortunately it will be remembered for reasons that we do not like but Rob Paul are in here standing in for the third time in this game overall on the afternoon he's standing in for the sixth time one and one the count on Mr. Pauler who came in today at 143 0 for 2 in game 2 the 1-1 one, one misses high so I'm liking what I'm seeing out of Angus so far. And he pitched in a non-public game against these Beavers back on that May the 17th game. But I'm liking what I'm seeing so far. I think I realize where those balls must have missed in those three walks. Probably high. As you see his delivery, he kind of has trouble finishing sometimes. And we talked about those pitchers and first baseman and second baseman over there on the right side of the infield. And... A good job by Cuddy to take charge and take that baseball right there to end the inning. A 1-2-3 for Mr. Angus. A really nice job right there. And we will head to the sixth inning. Mam is still out in front by a run with some help defensively. And they'll take it into the sixth. You're watching the USPBL YouTube channel.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Rich Borland, Drew Kell here with you. We're through five in this second game of this doubleheader here on this gorgeous Sunday, May the 27th. 5-4 Mammoths as we head to this top of the sixth inning. Ross Vance's day in relief is done. Goes just the one frame. Allowed a walk, but that was it. And now he gives way to Jonathan Escobar. Escobar standing in here in his fifth game in relief with these Beavers. He's gone 3.2 innings. He actually has a 2-0 record under his belt so far. He's allowed just two hits in those three and two-thirds innings. He's allowed one walk but has six strikeouts to his credit. So a nice arm out there on the mound for this Beaver team. And he'll deal with Tyler Pagano, Ethan Whisker, and Jalen Lawson, the man of this Memorial Day weekend as far as offense is concerned. Of course, we know the man who's the defensive star and Mr. Kitson. Well, during that conversation, Tyler Pagano has fallen behind one and two. As you mentioned, he is leading off the frame for the Mammoths. This one tapped back to the mound. And Escobar looked as if he was going to reach his bare hand out and thought better of it. Did sacrifice a base hit, but saved his health at the same time. Because that's a very easy way to really sit out a couple weeks with a hand or wrist injury. So ultimately a smart play. Yeah, in a moment like that, you're not thinking. You're just reacting if you're Escobar. And he probably, in the end, did the smart thing. The ball wasn't hit tremendously hard off the bat of Tyler Pagano, but a smart decision there from Escobar to let that one slide by. And who knows, maybe he'll get another ground ball here that could turn into two. And instead of a broken hand or a bruise, he will continue to fight here against Whisker ahead in the count 0-1. Here's the 0-1. That one is flared back to the seats. And if that ball was hit a little bit harder, it would have been a little more difficult to get out of the way. It was hit soft enough where Escobar had time to think about it. But now he's on to the next batter and already ahead, 0-2. It will be tough to try and get two against Whisker and Pagano here. Decent speed between the two. The 0-2 is fouled back once more. Count remains 0-2. Fans still out here for game two of this doubleheader, having a good time, enjoying the sun on this Memorial Day weekend. Yeah, we will have Eastside Diamond Hoppers and Utica Unicorns in action. It's Memorial Day tomorrow. U.S. PBL Star Spangled Sunglasses giveaway. First 750 fans will get those sunglasses. It's also Dollar Day at the ballpark. Whisk. Dollar hot dogs, dollar chips, dollar soft drinks. If you haven't gotten tickets and don't have plans for Memorial Day yet, we'd love to see you come out to the ballpark. And Affordable family fun, no doubt, nope. as Whisker is behind 0-2, or 1-2, excuse me. Here's the 1-2. It is flown to right field. Looks like it's lost in the sun. And able to block out the sun with his glove is Ryan Smith, who hauls it in for the first out of the inning. That's not an easy play with the sun glaring in your eyes. Yeah, not by any means. That ball was hit on a tear, a big fly ball. It only went about 300 and so many feet, but nice job by Ryan Smith to be ready and anticipative of the fly ball coming his way. And I'll tell you what, if the Beavers could put somebody on top of the fence out there in left field now, I bet you they would if they could with Lawson coming up to the plate. He has been tough to stop and actually nearly impossible to stop here this afternoon. He has been retired twice via a couple of flyouts to center field, but outside of that, on this double header day, he's got a home run, a double, and two walks to his credit. And on, Four RBIs with that grand slam in the first. And on game two, he's actually one for one with that walk. This time, he'll float it down the right field line. Looks like it's gonna get foul, and it does right into that bullpen of the Mammoths. But yeah, Lawson came into yesterday's game struggling, trying to really get going. And in the last couple of days, he's hit a home, he's hit two home runs, three run shot, grand slam, hit a couple of doubles, and gotten his fair share of base on balls too. So he's done a really nice job in these last couple of games. The 0-1, a little off balance there, but was able to follow it back to the screen. 
Yeah, manager of this Westside Woolly Mammoth team, Mr. Shane McCaddy, had a little in-between inning action conversation with Matt Derry down in the field, our in-game host and ESPN3 broadcaster. Talked about the surge that Jalen Lawson has created this weekend. Shane McCaddy, probably the biggest fan of Jalen so far here this weekend. As Mr. Lawson looks at that one sell outside, one and two the count. And I'll tell you what, that was a really close play on the outside corner, but when things are sort of going your way at the plate, everybody notices, and maybe that had to do a little bit with why that was called a ball right there. You don't think of things like that too often, but might have changed the mind of home plate umpire Gary Wagonshuts. And there's another very good example of it. Yeah, umpires are human, as that one looked good as well, but it was called a ball. But, yeah, it – <clears throat> it takes a toll on everyone. People notice, and umpires are no different. They they see that, and they, they'll give you a little more lenience as it's now 2-2. Two and two. Snap throw back to first, not in time. Lawson steps out of the box for a moment. Now getting ready. Very relaxed stance at the plate. Stands up fairly straight. And the 2-2. Two -two. That one's in there for a strike. And Lawson is retired. Looks up at the sky in disgust. But will have to walk back to the dugout. Now two gone. It's a big out right there for the man on the mound, Mr. Jack Angus. Lawson has been quite the threat all weekend long. So if you're a Beaver fan, you like the looks of that. Lawson retired for the first time here in this game two of this double header and now Jordan Thomas will stand in with two outs and a man on first yeah, Angus's job is to just keep this game where it's at and obviously on the other end of it if you're a man with you're trying to get that at least one insurance run maybe even two because one run leads are tough to tough to really close down at the end of ball games you, you like that extra cushion of one or two runs yeah the Beavers with at least two more at bats here in this one. The 0 1 is in there for a strike on Thomas. So Angus doing a good job pounding the zone with strikes. Already had 0 2 here with two outs. And this is a big spot for the Beavers to get out of it with yeah. only down one run. Yeah, if you're Angus, you don't want to give Thomas anything too close here as you're headed 0 and 2. I'd try and go with a fastball at the letters or something that starts in the zone and then drops out of it if you are Angus. And good call there. That one started off on the outer part of the plate. Maybe not what he was looking to do, but you don't mind that on an 0-2 pitch. It was nothing good to hit. Would yeah. have liked to see that maybe a little lower in the zone, but no damage done. Yeah, nonetheless, a waste pitch for the right-hander. See if it could turn into a setup pitch. Try and get Thomas to chase after another one. The 1-2, and good call. Rich Borland, swing and a miss by Jordan Thomas. Angus retires the Mammoth in the sixth. We'll be back with more. You're watching the USPBL YouTube channel.
And we're back for the bottom of the sixth inning. Beavers will take their cuts in the sixth. Jack Rannick will lead things off for these Beavers. Let's see if the Mammoths can close out. It'll be Hranic, Mercado, and Wood to start things off. Those will be the guys who definitely will get a shot at the plate. Yeah, Hranic over two on the day, but between Mercado and Wood, both of them with a walk and a single apiece. So if Hranic can get on base here for the Beavers, then Mercado and Wood behind them could get something brewing. Just got to get that leadoff man on if you're the Beavers here with just your second to last opportunity at the plates here this afternoon. The 1 0 from the big lefty misses. And the pitch runs inside on Hranic. Excuse me, that was the 1 0. Now it's 2 0. And one thing with Angus's delivery, he kind of pauses as he gets to that leg kick. You'll see it here. Brings it up, pauses, brings it back. It's all about messing with the timing of these hitters. And Hranic, after working the 3 0 count, looks at a called strike. Count three and one on the batter, and we talked about shifts a little bit as Lawson's ranged a little bit closer towards first base. That one flared to left field. It's going to be trouble, and it's going to get down. Hranic taking a wide turn, but he'll stay at first base. And, yeah, there was a wide hole up the middle, but big hole between those three Woolly Mammoth defenders. There was really no chance at that ball for any three of those guys. Yeah, as tough as this Great game of baseball can be. Sometimes it's just that simple. Play it where they ain't, and Hranick does just that. Now Mercado will stand in, Wood on deck, but you got, you're got down one towards the end of this ball game. Mercado does have some speed. You got the tying run over there at first base. It's almost a guarantee that Mercado will try and lay one down here as we see Kimbrough over there playing in. And they're actually... It appears they're going to give Mercado the green light, which also surprised me. I was expecting Mercado to lay something down and get that tying run in the scoring position. Chris Newell, the manager of the Beavers, now giving signs to Mercado. So maybe that, they were taking one well, and now very well could be. going after it as Mercado's ahead here in the count 1-0. and And still with the green light, swings through that breaking ball. 1-1 one and one the count on Mr. Mercado. And, yeah, that, that's a bit curious to me. I feel like Mercado, who has been struggling the beginning part of the season, and a guy who he does have a hit today but in a walk. However, it, from a baseball standpoint, you feel like you want to get that run into scoring position with less than two outs. And that one's ripped, and it looks like it's going to be two. Great play at the third base and a nice catch at first by Brandon Cuddy over there at first base and very quickly that turned in to a first it looked like it was going to be a great inning and that could have been a single or doubled on the line instead two are down and nobody on and that's just deflating if you're a beaver yeah beavers losing game one by three runs and trying to inch back into this game and i saw chris newell speaking with jack Cranick as he was coming in to the dugout on the third base side Chris with just his hands kind of out asking for an answer. Frantic wasn't a hit and run, wasn't going on the pitch. and Supposed to freeze until that ball gets through. You got to freeze on that line drive. You go halfway on a fly ball, you're going automatic on the ground, but on those line drives, you got to freeze where you're at, make sure it gets through. But instead, Frantic's doubled off at first, and now look at this. Ground ball to second, gobbled up and by Lawson. Easy play on the first, and that'll retire the side. In the sixth inning, we're going to head to the seventh inning. We'll be back with more. You're watching the USPBL YouTube channel.
Welcome back, seventh inning time here at Jimmy John's Field. Jonathan Escobar went one inning, gave up one hit, no runs, and no earned, obviously. No walks and two strikeouts. However, there's a new man on the mound, and it's Matt Dallas. Rich, what do you have on Mr. Dallas? Yeah, the right-hander out of Boise, Idaho, out of the University of Minnesota, Crookston, making his fifth appearance from the bullpen for the Beavers here in 2018. In those four relief appearances thus far, he's got three saves under his belt, 3.2 innings. He's allowed just two hits. He does have four walks and three strikeouts, but a 2.45 ERA and a 1.64 whip have him in a good situation to pitch. Beavers trailing this one by a run, but they're expecting Matt Dallas to get a quick inning out, and then the Beavers will try and make a comeback in the last frame. As Jackson Smith pops up a bunt on the first pitch from Matt Dallas. Trying to catch the third baseman, Christian Helsel sleeping over there. Good idea, however, uh, wasn't able to execute it. And the 0-1 from Dallas, driven high in the air. Right field, fairly deep. Back to the wall, and it's gone! Jackson Smith, it's a line drive home run. And look at, look at him sprinting around the bases. Not sure if he knew if that one left the park or not, or if he's just a hustler. Either way, you love the hard work showing right there from Jackson Smith, and that is his first home run of the season. And that ball got out in a hurry. Ryan Smith ran back, and as soon as he looked up, that ball was in the yard. And yeah, as I said, Jackson Smith did not waste any time with his home run shot. He, he really got going down the line. And you know, I'll tell you what, when I was doing the interview desk out in front pregame last night, found out Jackson Smith's parents were actually in town it says his hometown is Salem, Oregon. So that's a so that's, that's quite a, a drive. Long. Hopefully for his sake or and his family's flight. sake, hopefully they stuck around here for this one here today. Yeah, that was a good piece of hitting. He just got the bat barrel out in front and was able to drive it right over that le uh, right field wall. Excuse me. The 0-1 to Kimbrough bounces in 1-1. Matt Dallas really needed to close the door and keep this a one-run game. That makes it a little bit harder now going in to the bottom half of the seventh, which today is going to act like the ninth inning because of the format. The USPBL does four doubleheaders where both games are seven innings, which just makes the day that much shorter as it's one, two. Now Dallas gets ahead, but misses that one, two and two. Good pitch from Dallas on the one, two breaking ball that started on the outside part of the plate and dropped out of the zone. But a better job from Kimbrough to hold off and keep the bat alive here. The 2-2 two -two inside. Run the count full. Dallas adjusting the landing area. We saw earlier in the game McKenzie fiddle with that. And now Dallas, maybe I don't know if, if it was an issue or if he's just fidgeting, but whatever the case is, that's the second pitcher to do that. The 3-2 check to swing. Did Kimbrough, did he go? I don't believe so. He's aboard with no out, so a home run, and now a walk for the Mammoth, and what we thought was gonna be a quick one, two, three inning has already turned into a home run and a walk, and now still nobody out. Yeah, Matt Dallas's numbers coming into the appearance here today have been really good, but that home run and now base on balls have him struggling here with one out, or excuse me, one on and nobody out. The Beavers already trailing this one by two runs. And it looks as if, from our vantage point, as Tommy Fiesel swings and misses at the first offer he sees, I do see a man warming up in the bullpen. Didn't even really need the binoculars. That's Gavin Collins, the closer for this west side Willie Mammoth team out there in the pen getting loose. So expect him to come out for the home half of the seven. Runner on the move. Throw is in time. Kimbrough is retired. Another absolute dart by Adam Gothier. We've seen a couple of very nice throws from that young man, and Kimbrough was toast once again. Yeah, a lot of speed on the base pass for Kimbrough, but for the second time today, we've seen Adam Gothier make a perfect play to toss that ball to second base, and just in the nick of time, had a couple of Wooly Mammoth fans in the attendance disagree with that call, but it was, in fact, an out, a bang-bang play out there at second base. Nice job 
from everybody involved right there. And just like that, one out, and now Fiesel's already down in the count here, 0-2. Here is that 0-2, breaking ball high. Chopper, Mercado, short hops, throws the first. Nice play to get Fiesel at first by a couple of stops. Mercado let that one kind of creep up on him. We've talked about it a couple times today. You want to charge that ball and create a nice hop for yourself. Well, Mercado made it a little difficult, but was able to make the nice throw across the diamond and record the second out of this seventh inning. Got play-by-play -play play and color all taken care of right there, Drew. That was, uh, that was pretty good. That was the perfect description. Took the words right out of my mouth. Mercado didn't really play that ball on the correct uh, foot there, but ends up making the play. So two outs here now in the top half of the seventh. Nobody happier than Matt Dallas out there on the bump helping uh, his defense out right there. Yeah, that nice throw by Gothier and a little nifty play by Skyler Mercado. Two quick outs after the home run and walk. This one driven left field. It's going to get down. That could get to the wall. It will. Kitson on his way to second. He'll get there standing up. The USPBL celebrity of the weekend is aboard with a double after that wonderful catch we saw last night. And I believe that's the 14th time we mentioned it today. <laughs> Never enough when yeah, we're gonna be talking you got a about video, that make it on now. national yep. television, and not only that, but on top 10 plays of Sports Center. But I'll tell you what, really happy for Drew Kitson from an offensive standpoint on that double. In the game here in game two, he was over three with two flyouts to center and a strikeout. And in game one, he did have an RBI double and a run scored, but he had three strikeouts in that first game. So four strikeouts on the day for Kitson at the plate, but that double right there. Keep the mammoths going here in the top of the seventh. And here's Cuddy who looks at strike one, trying to hopefully get another insurance run for the mammoths as they head in to the bottom of the seventh, which I mentioned earlier in the frame will act like the ninth. Cuddy one for two with a single today. That one bounces in, and Kitson will stay put at second base. Cuddy, another one of these guys that we've mentioned all day, kind of off to slow starts. We've seen a lot of guys in the 100s and even below that. But we are seeing as the weather heats up, so is the offense, and that's, that's really promising for a lot of these hitters. Cuddy watches that one sail outside, 2-1 and one on Brandon. One RBI so far on the season, three runs, four walks, and only – well, actually now two hits as he tallied one today. That one just missed inside. Good eye by Brandon Cuddy to get ahead three and one. It's turned into a really beautiful evening. It's been a hot one all day, but temperature slowly dying down as Matt Dallas pours in a strike on the outer edge. Much needed strike right there. Don't want to put Brandon Cuddy on first base to bring runners to first and second with Tyler Pagano standing in. Two singles here in game two and did have that two run homer back in game one. So you really want to try and re retire Cuddy here. But look at that. That base on balls, second of the inning. Continue this one here for the Mammoths in the top of the seventh. Yeah, Matt Dallas struggling finished in this frame out and right now I said at the beginning of the frame you wanted to keep it five to four now your only job is to make sure no one else comes in to score because every run that comes in the probability of coming back and tying or winning this game gets lower and lower which I mean, that's just logic but it's important that you close the door while you can as now Tyler Pagano stands in who already has a base hit this afternoon and a home run in game one. That one high and in, that'll dust you out of the way. So you gotta wonder where Matt Dallas is at mentally. You're in the second game of this doubleheader on this hot afternoon. He hadn't pitched at all coming into this inning. Been sitting down, not sure exactly how he was prepping himself physically before the game, but it had been a while since he was up and moving around and that does take a toll mentally on a player you're not 100 percent 
and it's really tough to be a bullpen guy. You got to be mentally tough and really grind through some of these at-bats. The 1-0 is swung right through, maybe a little out in front was Pagano, even the count up at 1-1. One and one. It is 6.30 now in Utica, Michigan. Day started at 1.05 for the first game. We've seen a great day of baseball. Runner on the move, tap back, and I believe that, yeah, that was Kitson who maybe tried to catch Dallas off guard, or maybe it was a hit and run, but whatever the case was, still playing aggressive even with this two-run lead late in the game. Yeah, I was thinking about the hit and run there, but the runner at first, Brandon Cuddy, wasn't really going anywhere. And that's the second time we've seen that exact play where the runner on second takes off. So I wonder what, I haven't really seen a lot of that as Dallas gets ready for the one, two, and it's popped back out of play. Dallas ahead, one and two. That one bounces in and outside. Two and two the count. Yeah, so on the weekend for the Beavers, it's been a tough one. Started off on Thursday losing in a close one to the Eastside Diamond Hoppers by a score of two to one. And then here today, possibly going to be going 0 and two against the West Side Woolly Mammoths unless they can get two runs in the home half of the ninth. That one fouled straight back, most likely out of the stadium. We lose sight once it gets up to the suites, but most likely out of play completely, out of the stadium, I should say. Two and two, the count on Pagano. Ground ball, foul. Pagano stays alive. It's one thing I've noticed from Pagano today. He's taken pretty much everything to left field. He's been early on mostly everything on the afternoon, but we talked about how he does have that home run, and he's got two singles to his credit, or excuse me, two singles to, to his credit here in this game, three in total. So three singles and a home run on the afternoon for Pagano, and he is continuing to battle here in this at-bat against Matt Dallas, who continues to have that pitch count rise, but if you're Matt Dallas and you don't win this battle, mentally you got to be kicking yourself. Yeah, Dallas has been making the pitches. He's, I think he's executed the pitches he's wanted to. However, Pagano doing a very nice job of fighting everything off. The 2-2 again. This one shot down the line. This one also going to go foul, so we see yet another foul ball for Pagano, who continues to stay alive. Dallas trying to find a pitch that will retire Pagano. See if this is it. And it is strike three to Pagano, the third out of the seventh inning. Last call time for the Beavers. Let's see if they can come back. We'll be back with more on the USPBL YouTube channel.
going back is last call time for the Beavers. We're going to bring in the new pitcher, but first we're going to finalize the line of Angus. He really did a nice job only giving up one hit. No earned runs, no base on balls, and no strikeouts either. So all in all, a nice job, and he's going to give way to Gavin Collins. What do you have on Gavin? Yeah, Gavin Collins looking for his second save of the 2018 season. Had one last year in 2017, but is finding himself in this west side closer role here in 2018. First batter he'll face off, Daniel Oliveri. Seven, eight, nine hitters due up for the Beavers here in the final frame. 0-1 oh the count on Daniel. This one skied in the air. Will there be room? No, there will not. It'll hit the screen before any woolly mammoth could run it down. So as you mentioned, seven, eight, nine hitters for the Beavers, and if they want to get it done, the bottom of the lineup's going to have to get it done. And things start off with Daniel Oliveri. That one fouled back. <laughs> Daniel Avery got down 0 and 2 fairly quickly. And here's the 0 2. Line Lawson. Picks it up on one hop, throws the first one away quickly in the bottom of the ninth inning. Next up for the Beavers, the third baseman, number 18, Christian Helmsville. Christian Helsel will step in with one away. Beavers needing two runs to stay alive in this one. Gavin Collins retired the first beaver he saw. First pitch of the at-bat is a fastball that shot right down the middle and Helsel behind 0-1. That one skied. Once again, it's going to be questionable if there's room, it appears there is, and that is caught by Brandon Cuddy there at first base. So Beavers down to their last out. Thanks for joining us today. It's been a fun day of baseball, and Rich Borland and I have enjoyed bringing it to you as Adam Gothier with his chance to keep things going for the Beavers. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun, Drew. Excited to have you on the call for the doubleheader here this afternoon. Also appreciate you taking charge on Friday when I couldn't be here for the baseball game. It's been a long weekend of hard work, but it's been fun. We've seen great baseball, made it onto Sports Center's top 10 plays. Who knows what the nightcap of the weekend will bring tomorrow on the Memorial Day as we'll have the Hoppers and Unis in action. Best part about it, there's more to go as Gothier even one and one. That one misses inside, so it's two and one on the catcher, Gothier, who's gone down a few runners at second base. Once again, we see a pretty wide hole in the middle of the field for Gothier as the middle infield playing fairly wide. Two and one the count on Gothier now. So just one base runner will allow the Beavers to have the tying run at the plate. The pitch fouled straight back. 
Beavers now down to their last strike. So in a seven inning game, starters only need to go four innings to get the victory. Joseph Mack, in, fa in fact, went four innings. And the Mammoths have been in front this entire game. So Mack will be in line for the victory. Mack on the season coming into play today, an 0-0 record. He had just the one outing previously on May the 19th against the Unicorns, but in his first start, here with the Mammoths, he's got an opportunity to get a victory. Count is full and Gothier is aboard, so the tying run at the plate. So things not quite done yet. Ryan Smith, we're gonna go back to the top of the order now. So the bottom of the order did their job. They got it back to the top and that's really all you can ask for. Nice job by Gothier to draw the walk. Really battling in that at bat. Smith with a homer, so keep that in mind. If he can go yard again, it will tie the score. That one misses inside. So we saw it in game one of the doubleheader where things got interesting towards the tail end, although the Mammoths were able to close things out. The 1-0 pitch, you ready to come? And it's in there for a strike, so I think Smith was taking until he got a strike, as that one looked to be pretty good down the middle. The 1-1, that one misses inside as well, so Ryan Smith able to get ahead. In this bottom of the seventh. The pitch. Driven in the gap, left center field, and it's down. Cut off out there by Fiesel. And on to third goes. That goes, there's, sorry, excuse me. Gothier goes to third. Base hit for Smith. And now Rulis, who has been the man for the past two years now. This is his second year really being the face of the Beavers. And if he puts one on the gap, he could tie this game up. Could tie it with a gap shot, could end it with a homer. He already does have a homer on the season. They're gonna, they're gonna keep him. I don't believe they're gonna give him a free pass. They're gonna go after him. So, Rulis versus Gavin Collins for the ball game. Collins needs to get this big out, and he throws a strike. It looks like it may have been high, and I think Rulis silently protesting that, but it, he's behind 0-1, and, and this big spot Beavers trying to salvage a win on this day. The 0 1. Line up the middle into center field. Base hit. Gothier will come in to score. Smith to second. And Thomas Rulis has made this a one run game. So now a gapper could win it. A single could tie it. And a great job by Thomas Rulis to keep this going. Now, Just a good piece of hitting. And now Shane McCaddy. Slowly walking out to pitcher's mound. Nobody getting loose in the west side bullpen. This is merely a confidence and strategical meeting of the minds on the mound, but got to imagine west side Willie Mammoth a tad rattled here. You had the leadoff ground out and the one out pop out. Two outs on the board, nobody on base. You get the walk to Gauthier. You get Smith. With the base knock, Rulis 
right over there now on first. We got runners on first and second. Robert Pauler standing in. And Gavin Collins is going to try and somehow get out of this jam. And boy, do the Mammoths need it. But do the Beavers need this win bad? Oh, completely need this win. They've been scuffling this weekend and scuffling today. They've really had troubles getting the bats going. But a Robert Pauler gap shot could really change the complexion of the Beavers' whole feel right now. They could really... This could really be a big a big time hit. Yeah, this is the game right here. You got tying run at second, winning run at first. Pauler, not the base hit kind of guy. If he's going to make contact with it, it's going to go for a ride. It might not leave the park, but it'll go for a ride for sure. First pitch, swing and a miss. And that swing matched up with what you were saying. He was trying to put that into the season. A good pitch by Gavin Collins. Yeah, to, not, to fool Pollard. Not only that, Pollard was probably expecting the fastball there. He was way ahead of that last pitch. If I'm Collins, I'm going to bring it in once more, maybe a little lower this time. The 0-1 on the ground. This should do it. And it's go actually going to go foul. It started off fair and s took a weird spin foul. And fortunate for Robert Pollard because that was going to be the end of the game as yeah. it was a routine ground ball there at first base to Cuddy, however. Yeah, still alive. Pauler going down that first baseline. You saw him coming back, cheese and cheek to cheek. Fortunate for him that that ball had ricocheted and went a little bit right at the last second there. But count 0-2. If you're Collins here, you still don't want to give Pauler anything that he can handle. Count doesn't matter. If you put something over the plate, especially in an 0-2 count, Pauler's going to try and protect and make contact with it. I'm Collins, I'm not throwing anything near the zone. And good call. Rich, that one missed well outside, one and two. Still have two or three pitches to work with. If you're Collins, I'm not giving anything Pauler can throw. And, you know, thinking back to that first pitch of the at-bat, I might try that same exact pitch here ahead still, one and two, try and bend that one in below the bat. Here is the one, two. Just missed. Looked good up from up here. However, must have been a tad off the plate or maybe just a bit high. However, the count is now even, two and two. And the one thing you don't want to do is load the bases up. Well, not only load the bases, but if he throws a ball right here, runners will be on the move on the next pitch. So you want to retire Pauler here if you can. Swing and a miss. He got him on strikes. Gavin Collins comes in and closes the door on the Beavers who gave a bid to tie the game. But thankfully for the Mammoths, Gavin Collins able to come in and do his job and close this one out for the Mammoths. Well, the Mammoths took two today from the Beavers. All in all, it was fairly dominated by the Beavers, or by the Mammoths, excuse me. The scoreboard might not reflect that. They were two pretty close games for the most part, but we saw both games the Mammoths outpitched the Beavers and we saw timely hitting from the Mammoths that we didn't quite see from the Beavers. Rich Borland, you were my play-by-play uh, -play guy today in game one. I was play-by-play -play in game two. What are your thoughts overall on the doubleheader we saw today? Yeah, so, you know, I loved what I saw from the West Side Woolly Mammoths here today. They were 0-2 on the season against these Birmingham Bloomfield Beavers coming into play today. But taking two victories here in the doubleheader, got to give a shout out to Shane McCaddy, the manager of this West Side team. He managed two really good ball games. It was competitive all day long. Nobody really ran away with anything at any point during the game. Mammoths in the first game, winning over the Beavers by a final of seven to four. They got three runs in the first inning of game one, two in the third, two more in the fifth, and then in game two, they got four runs off one swing of the bat from Jalen Lawson in inning number one. They tacked on one in the fourth, one more in the seventh with that solo shot from Jackson Smith, and that solo shot will actually end up proving the difference. If they did not give up that solo shot to Jackson Smith in the top half of the seventh inning, we could have been sitting here for inning eight, nine, who knows how many we could have went along throughout this baseball game. But Drew, nice job here today with me. And uh, 
Shout out Luke Hammett for helping us out in game one and part of game two. We will have Stephen McDonald on the call with me tomorrow for our Memorial Day contest. It will be the Eastside Diamond Hoppers and Utica Unicorns in action. First pitch at 105, the sixth game of the weekend coming up, and it will be our USPBL Star Spangled Sunglasses giveaway. First 750 fans will get a pair of those, and then it will be Dollar Day at the ballpark. Dollar hot dogs, dollar soft drinks, and dollar chips. If you don't have any plans yet for tomorrow afternoon and would like to celebrate Memorial Day in the best possible fashion, going to a baseball game, no better way to celebrate the country than coming out to watch America's pastime, but excited for the matchup tomorrow. The Beavers will reflect on what happened here today and take that into next Thursday's matchup where they'll face off against the Utica Unicorns. But overall, a great weekend for the Mammoths. Tough weekend for the Beavers as we will move on to weekend number four here at Jimmy John's Field of this 2018 summer. Drew, any final thoughts here? Well, it's been a great weekend of baseball. We saw a great play out in center field on last night. We saw a bunch of home runs, through run shot, grand slam. Come down to the ballpark. I'm telling you, this is a great time. It's it's family fun. It's good baseball. And we're watching it on a night-to-night basis. It, and we're telling you, this league has a lot to offer, not only from an entertainment standpoint, but from a baseball standpoint. And we hope that you join us. Well, anyway, it's been a great night, day and night now of baseball as we head into the evening here in Utica, Michigan. But that's it. We will send you off. We'll be back tomorrow for Memorial Day. That's Rich Borland and Stephen McDonald on the call. But for today, I'm Drew Kell saying so long, and thanks for listening. This is the USPBL YouTube channel.